get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of inspiredinsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And before I introduce Kevin Miller of Grow, I like to mention, Kevin, a few past episodes people should check out. And, you know, Kevin helps a lot of um, D2C brands, actually. And so I was like, what are D2C brands have been interesting guests? And uh, so I had the founder of RX Bar, and this was pre selling to Kellogg. Um, and he talked about the journey of making the bars, first bars in his kitchen, and then obviously growing. And he sold the Kellogg, I think, for, you know, what's, I don't know if it's verified or not, but it was online. So everything online is true, right, Kevin? So That's it was like correct. over yeah. $600 million. Um, and the founder of Quest Nutrition, Yes Bar. I like bars, like Truth yeah. Bar. Um, so like I like interviewing the same people and the companies I admire. So I'm like, oh, this Truth Bar is delicious. It's got probiotics. I'm gonna have the founder on, um, and yeah. I just love having it. So uh, people can check out that and many, many more at inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise Twenty Five. Uh, Rise Twenty Five. We help businesses give to and connect to their dream one hundred relationships and partnerships, and we do that by helping you run your podcast. You know, for me, Kevin, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationships, and one of those ways over the past over decade. I have found to have the people and companies I admire on to profile them and shout to the rooftops what they do and to tell other people what they do. And then when I'm going to introduce, you know, I probably make five to 30 introductions a day. Now yeah. I have an episode to go, hey, you should meet Kevin. And by the way, I interviewed him. You should check out what their company does. Then I have an episode that can point people to that. So if you are out there and you've thought about podcasting, I think you should. If you have a business, I believe you should have a podcast, period. Um, if you have questions, we're here for you. You can go to rise25.com, email us. You can email, go to the contact page, and we are quick to respond and we'll try and answer anything that you have or want. So without further ado, Kevin Miller is co-founder of Grow. And by the way, it's cool. I love your domain, Kevin, because Thank it's, you. it's not your typical. It's gr0.com. Yep. And a three letter number domain is hard to come by. So you may have to tell the story of getting that, but it's growgr0.com. They help scale D to C and technology companies with growth marketing frameworks. He learned these frameworks working at Google and a lot of other startups. And they have helped companies like Legends Boxing, Mute 6, Pumpkin Care, AdQuicks, you know, Advantage, Rent-A-Car. There's so many out there, um, but Kevin, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm super excited to be here. I've, I've, I've heard of the other podcasts, so I'm, I'm in good company. You are in good company. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about what you do at Grow, but I want to start with, you know, I was, we were talking about what's top of mind and for your company, it's always top of mind is hiring people and just serving the good people that you have. And you learn some of these things, you know, keeping people happy, not just today, but for the long haul. And you've worked for some companies that really do care about culture and they put steps in place and you've learned from those companies. So I wanted to start the conversation there of what were some of the things we could start with Google that you learned at Google that you now do with, with Grow? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I spent two years at Google early on in my career. Um, I worked at a startup right out of college. And after that ended, I, I went to Google. I was fortunate enough to have that experience. Number one is training. Um, Google trains people for you know longer and more thoroughly than I've, I've had at any other company. Now, of course, they have the luxury to do that because they're so profitable. They don't need you to go straight to work for them. But um, but that was amazing. I, I saw the value in being able to. It gives the new employees confidence that they can do their job. Mm. Um, sat How did they train you? What was effective? Um, a lot of interactive training and working with real live customers that didn't spend a lot of money with Google on the ad platform, but still, you know, needed attention. And we, you know, we had a little, lot of leniency with those people. So someone, a coffee shop would spend, um, you know, $10 a day. And I would talk to the coffee shop owner and I would understand their business needs. And I would figure out, you know, what campaigns would work for, um, you know, getting more people to call their phone, which is where they got a lot of business. And so 
it taught me relationship building. It taught me how to be responsible on time. Um, think about what the customer is at, is asking and listen to them and then uh, recommend a campaign that would meet their needs. So there was a combination of that as well as um, their own training program. So like getting certified in Google Analytics, getting certified in their AdWords course um, and just being fully immersed in shadowing calls of other people. So I would be able to silently listen in to calls that had happened with much larger brands, Lyft, Uber, you know, Walmart. Um, and that was, uh, I learned a lot through osmosis that way. And so that's what we do at Grow actually, is we have um, our new team members listen in for, uh, for you know two months at a time when they get started. Um, and we have our own proprietary training programs now, as well as publicly available training programs that we use. And we just couple the both of those together. So some will come on, you will train them on, you know, like in, as Google does go through this, you know, training program that we have this online training program, whatever it is, certification, then yep. they may shadow someone and listen in on calls, whether live or recorded, and right. then they kind of get their feet wet with, with clients. Is there any, I'm curious how the mentorship works, or is there someone over your shoulder with, as you're working with them, or by the time you're done shadowing? they just kind of release you? Well, it's a little bit of both. You know, it depends on the people that we're connecting our new hires with. I try to foster a culture of, you know, helping people out with the expectation of nothing in return. Um, just passing on what was given to you. I think that's the, you know, the best, most altruistic way to be for our employees. I try to hire for that quality. Um, I think that experienced hires who are in a great standing with growth should want to spend their time, um, you know, helping other people. And so, there is that, that element. And then there's a, a senior manager that manages all of our account managers and our SEO specialists. And they don't just go off into the wild. That, those, that manager is overseeing their calls and, and making sure their work is satisfactory. Um, and that's typically how we do it. And then they all have a direct line of communication to me. Um, and I believe it or not, I'm still checking in on all of their work um, to make sure that it's done properly. And it, it, I look for areas where I can give constructive feedback. So were you, you were at the Mountain View location for Google? I was or? at the Mountain View location, yeah. commuting from, I lived in San Francisco, but I would commute down to Mountain View every day. Mm -hmm. Yep. I feel like, Kevin, if I worked at Google, I don't know if I'd leave. There's so many perks. And yeah. it, um, what was that decision to eventually leave Google? You know, it was multifaceted. I, um, I come from an entrepreneurial background. Uh, my dad's an entrepreneur. My brother's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And and what did I, your what did your dad do? My dad was actually the CEO of Budget Rent a Car, hmm. um, and um, he started with one location in Ormond Beach, Florida, which is where I grew up. That's why we we live there. Um, and one location led to another, and he was able to acquire enough franchises to have a majority um, position in them. And then he took them public in 1997. And That's pretty amazing. It is. It is. Yeah. And so I thought that experience that he went through was of course very difficult, but also really, really rewarding. And what he's always tried to teach me was that it's about the journey of entrepreneurship, not necessarily the end result. It's not about making millions of dollars and, and all that. It's about enjoying yourself in the process, success or fail. And truthfully for myself, I wanted to see, you know, what am I made of? Can I make it on my own? I, you know, I, I didn't want to get into car rental because that was his thing. And so I thought, let me get into technology and online businesses. And, um, and I admired the people who sold companies to Google that I would meet on Google's campus and play basketball with them. And I, I thought it was a more intriguing story. Um, and, um, but I, I, you know, it's funny. I had a dinner with a, my old teammate at Google last night and I actually implored him to stay at Google for 30 years because he's on a great trajectory there and makes a bunch of money and, has found fulfilling things to do. And, you know, it just kind of depends on what personality you have. It's the grass yeah. isn't always greener. You know, it's uh, <laughs> the first few years out of Google were not, uh, were not pretty. No one was asking me to speak on podcasts. I can tell you that. <laughs> I know. I just, I, I visited a friend who worked at LinkedIn in Chicago and they had a full floor. They had, they had breakfast, lunch, and dinner available. Yeah. I, yeah. They had, you know, game rooms. And I was like, I think if I started here, I don't know if I'd ever leave, even though I do have that entrepreneur. So, yeah, you know, I still want to go back and work there <laughs> when I'm done with this. You know, if I was to get married and have kids, I want to go work at Google every day and, and try to, you know, get a job. But hopefully they'll accept me back. What um, other lessons do you learn from your dad growing up? So that was one like 
I don't know if you saw him, you know, it, it's easier said than done sometimes. Like just, just enjoy the journey. Like that, that's yeah, sometimes yeah. easy yeah. to say, but harder to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and none of it's directly verbal. He's not a great communicator. So <laughs> he's not sitting me down saying, Hey, I learned this. I want to pass it on. To you. <laughs> right. It's more through yeah. talking with his friends and they tell me what it's like working with him or, um, you know, he'll, I'll, I'll overhear. I used to overhear him on phone calls all the time. And I saw how he treated people that worked with him and how um, he was very stern, but respectful to everybody. And, um, you know, always wanted to make people feel good. And but when people tried to take advantage of him or, you know, cut a bad deal with him in business, he would let them know that that's not acceptable. You know, and I've, I've learned how to, like, flex that muscle. You know, when you become successful with your business, a lot of people want a piece of it or want to slow you down and want to distract you. And. I've started to see that that side of the business world and and um you know I'm imploring everyone on our team to just stay focused and not get distracted with any of that and remember what it was like in the first few months building grow and you know and and keep that mentality as long as you can. It's amazing um Kevin you probably from an early age were kind of like you said learn from osmosis where it's infused these you know leadership principles are you know and that's Something that, you know, when you're running a company, there's so many different moving pieces uh, with Grow. And then, you know, oftentimes, at least the people I'm interviewing start to kind of try and improve their leadership skills later on because they didn't go, I want to be a leader. I want to start this company. Yeah. Um, what were some things that you remember either from your dad or learning from people at Google or Spire or open listings of, yeah. you know, leadership wise? Well, I think that I've, I've really tried to perfect the art of behaving in a way that makes people want to work hard for you. Um, I had a great CEO at, at Open Listings. His name was Judge Schoenholtz, and he was very well liked by the staff. And when we saw him being stressed during fundraising or, um, you know, just a little bit out of sorts because he was so much pressure he was carrying on his shoulders, people would go up to him and say, hey, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. You know, I really care about you personally. And how can I help you? And um, the CEO, current CEO of Open Door, which is now a public company, his name's Eric Wu. You know, he he used to before I left um, Open Door, my job was to go to speak to customers in Phoenix, Arizona, every weekend. I went eight straight weekends trying to get customer feedback. You know, and it wasn't the most fun thing to do on my weekend. I was working like seven days a week, but he showed up. And he would meet me at 8 a.m. at a random house waiting for people to come view the house and talk to them. And, mm -hmm. you know, he might have been worth several hundred million dollars at that time. And um, you would never know. Um, and he was there with me taking detailed notes, acting like he's an intern. And so I, I saw that and I said, wow, you know, I respect that a lot. Um, and then just, you know, at home, like with my mom, my mom was a homemaker. She, you know, never... Um, she, she, she actually was working at Avis and budget in the early days with my dad. She actually is the one who got him his first job at Avis 19, like 19. Wow. Yeah. Which is funny, but she kind of taught me that, um, you know, no matter who you're meeting with, everyone puts their pants on one leg at a time. And I used to get nervous and make things and make it into a big thing. Like one of the big things that I think has helped me be successful so far is reaching out to people that are in great positions and asking them how they did it. And she kind of taught me not to be afraid to reach out, just take your chance. You know, who knows? They might, uh, they might just respond. The and, worst thing uh, is they don't or say no. Course. Right. I mean, exactly, exactly. And that's how I got my first internship at living social when I was in college. That's how I actually got into Georgetown. I wrote a letter to the Dean and said, Hey, my SAT score is 400 points below what it says on your website. <laughs> <laughs> But here's here's the things I'll do to make, you know, to 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 to, to make you know my mark. Um, and so yeah. that type of stuff I think I've learned, but I just observe great leaders who are respected by their peers and I try to emulate that. You know, I don't I don't raise my voice to my employees, I don't um bark orders at them, I don't do anything like that. I, you know, if I want respect, I give respect. I love that. Yeah. Um, your copyrighted heart you know, getting into college, I guess. Um, living social, is that still around? No, they got acquired by Groupon. Oh, Groupon. Okay. 
Yeah. I was like being was in the- Chicago at the time, you know, I saw the early days of Groupon, you know, when they were like 10 staff. So you really, you really saw the rise of, of Groupon. It was unbelievable. It was really unbelievable. I, my internship was there. I was a sophomore in college and oh, Living Social was hiring 10 people a day. Um, and I couldn't believe it. I, I was, you know, mind blown. And, and everyone was so young and, and excited. And um, the, the, they were moving at a, a breakneck speed, like something I had never seen before. Um, they were launching in new cities every week. I was going, you know, traveling to, to help with that. I, it was the most exp- inspiring experience I had ever had. And then my peers were going to work, you know, on Wall Street. And I still don't know how to tie my own tie. So I thought, <laughs> I thought, I'm probably not suited for that life. You know, let me go try to do something more interesting for me. And that's, that's yeah. how I go into it. Um, talk about, you know, keeping, we talk about Google and, you know, open listings and open door. Um, what do you do at your company that you've taken to make sure the staff is happy? We do an all hands meeting every week, no matter what, rain or shine. And um, I have each member, each department head speak um, and let everyone know what's going on at the company. I think like, you know, when I got to Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin were still doing um, all hands meetings every Friday in person. And so I would go and, and watch them speak, you know, 20 yards away from me. and they had 50,000 employees at the time. Wow. And that same live broadcast was sent to every single office in the United States. It was fascinating. Um, and everyone watched it. And it was a... It was How a long was it usually? It was about an hour. Yeah. And they would give updates across the entire company that you know affected you or didn't in fact affect you directly. And it, uh, it made it feel very inclusive, made it feel like, hey, you know, we want to let you know what the self-driving unit is doing, even though you're selling ads. Um, before it gets printed up anywhere. We want to make sure that you understand that this is a close-knit Google family and we're going to share things here that aren't shared publicly. And when I got to open listings, the same type of thing was done and same at Open Door. And so I decided to continue it here. And I think people appreciate being in the know and it makes them more bought into to the greater mission of what you're trying to accomplish as an organization. I mm, love it. Anything else to mention? So all hands meeting. You know, one of the things that was um, was really prevalent that unfortunately is a challenge due to COVID was um, eating together. Um, you know, I, we did that every day at Google. Same thing with Open Door and Open Listings, and the company would provide lunch. Um, and if they couldn't afford it, they you know wouldn't do it every single day. But group team members would still go out and spend time together. And you know, we've we've struggled to find um, you know a way to rub. There's no real way to to to, you know, replace that. Right. Um, but we try to do a lot of culture and team building events. Um, and we're trying to save money right now for a, a physical team offsite as soon as it's safe. So every month we're saving as much as we can to be able to pay for that and pay for people's flights and get them into one central location. And, um, and if, if anyone is in the same geographic region, like one of our employees just volunteered to have another one stop by his house in Boston and meet for the first time. And, and it just does so much for camaraderie and um, team morale and things like that. There's nothing like breaking bread together. Um, nothing like it. You, you build what I call personal capital with people. Um, so, you know, for example, like I was driving into work today and my car broke down and uh, my assistant has COVID. And so, um, you know, one of another, our other team members reached out to me and said, hey, I know this week has got to be really tough because... Leanne is out with COVID and, and, you know, I, I know you're late because your car, can I call AAA for you and see if we can get someone to the office to help your car? And that's not in her job description, but that's the type of person she is. And we have a strong relationship that she wants to do that for me because we like each other and I would do the same for her. And so that's what I'm trying to foster that I think a lot of companies just miss. They think, you know, oh, this person just works for me. You know, that, that's, that's the antithesis of what I try to instill in our people. You know, Kevin, talk about the hiring process because that kind of starts with the hiring process, you know, yeah. attracting and choosing great people. So what does the, the hiring process look like? Well, it started with, you know, my twin sister is a recruiter and she's, you know, really, really great at it. She worked in multiple tech companies. So I, I really started by picking her brain. Um, but I got very fortunate with um, a referral from one of our advisors. His name is Carter Room. He runs uh, M13, which is a 
a venture capital fund in Los Angeles. And he sent me a guy named Aaron Friedman. And Aaron Friedman is our director or head of people. Um, and he built a, an amazing you know, uh, HR practice and recruiting practice. So we actually use a, a, a personality test called AccuMax. And for every single position that we have, we know what the ideal personality traits are to be successful in that role. And so we have every single person take that. We also have um, five different people that the candidate needs to speak to before they are accepted into grow. Um, and it has to be a unanimous decision, which is what I took from Google as well. Google does not hire um, anyone unless everyone on the hiring committee votes yes. If there's one no, they don't do it. And they have the, they have the ability to be that selective. We've chosen to do the same. Um, and actually one of the questions at Google is, would you want to go out to coffee or a meal with this person outside of work? The answer is no, they don't get hired. So we do something similar to that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we have a background check. We have, um, we have a take-home test. Um, and we try to have as many team members speak to, you know, our candidate as possible. And it's not always just like a, a grilling of questions, trying to understand, evaluate them. It's also us selling them. I feel like it's a two-way street. Um, but our whole process takes about three weeks, start to finish, which I think is fast, but not, um, not too fast. Um, and it allows us to check references and really be thorough with what we're, with our hiring process. Um, and we just make sure that we don't miss any calls. We're always on time. Um, and we treat every single candidate with a level of respect that as if they already work here. Um, I think that goes a long way. I want to hear Kevin more about grow what you do and um, and also just to start with how you met your co-founder. Yeah, so um, grow is an SEO agency. We're focused exclusively on organic search. And so that means we write blog posts for our clients, um, helping them rank number one for questions that relate to their products. So for example, we have an amazing client called Kalumi Beauty and they sell marine collagen bars. And I bring that up because I know you're, you, you're a bar guy. You like RX and, and Quest. So um, we'll write a 1500 word piece on what is marine collagen and how to, and what are its benefits. And so it sounds, it sounds right up my alley. I'm gonna have to it check does. It out. <laughs> I'll send you some after this call. I'll tell them that, you know, you're interested. And so um, that's, you know, we have three prongs to what we do. Number one is content writing. We recruit writers from universities. Um, when I was at Georgetown, um, I would, I needed some, a little bit of help with my long form essay. So I went to the writing center and when I got to the writing center, I realized just how smart and amazing those tutors are who are volunteering their time to help other students. So that's actually where we recruit from now. Um, those types of people, you know, regardless of what university they attend, they're typically amazing storytellers and we just need to step in and help them format their posts for SEO. And it's, it, it's been working well. So that's a big differentiator for us. Secondly, we act as a mini PR firm where we, we get press mentions and press hits for our clients. So um, those result in backlinks for our clients, which is really important um, to build trust and authority to your website. And so we get our clients featured in news outlets all over the place. And then lastly, we do on-page optimization, um, which you know, makes sure that your website is fast and, it, and it, it, uh, you know, it, it, all your web pages are titled something unique that tells Google what's being sold on your page. Um, and then um, my co-founder and I, we actually, we're both sober. Um, we've both been sober for five plus years. Um, we had our own independent struggles with uh, drugs and alcohol. Um, and so we met in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, and I'm not sure how much you know about that, but typically people go to AA meetings, um, you know, a few, five, six times a week or something in that neighborhood to stay sober and be emotionally sober. Um, and so that's how we met about four and a half years ago. And we both discovered that we have like a unique passion for SEO specifically, which is a very- What was rare... he doing at the time when you met him? Um, well, he was just leaving rehab. <laughs> I mean, was <laughs> but, he doing uh, stuff in SEO or- Yeah, or... so he, he has a much longer career in SEO specifically. So he was doing SEO for, for um, you know, Jack Dorsey for a period of time at, at Square. He was doing it for a guy named Mark Gardner. Uh, who ran a cash advance company. Um, so he had done a lot in like the finance space, but he, he's been exclusively focused on SEO for 10 plus years. 
Hmm. I was more of a multi, I was focused on Facebook ads, Google ads. And then at open listings, I really fell in love with organic search and competing against Zillow. And so he actually taught me a lot of what I know from an S on an SEO basis. You know, our first year meeting each other, I would call him every single day, multiple times a day, asking questions about SEO. Um, mm. And he was my number one mentor, taught me everything I know, along with all the courses I did. And I launched my own sites to, to learn on my own. And, and so we decided together, hey, let's, you know, let's, let's make a run at this. Um, we both had four or five consulting clients while we were working full-time jobs. And we thought, um, you know, we, we think we're a pretty formidable team together. He's an amazing salesperson. Um, and I, you know, think I'm good at the people management and, and, um, and other aspects of the business and we complement each other well, and that's what we decided to do. That's amazing. So, um, it's interesting. What have you taken from, um, AA and into the business, you know, cause there's a lot of principles that, you know, yeah. probably overlay into just life in general. Yeah, they do. It's a good rubric for for life. Um, you know, honesty is a big principle, being honest in all your affairs. Um, we try to deliver bad news fast. Um, if our campaigns are not working for our clients, we'll let them know ahead of time rather than them letting us know. Um, try to work something out and be forthright and transparent with them. Um, you know, a lot comes down to, we, we, we're very calm, cool, and collected. Not, no work emergency is the same as real emergencies in real life. So, you know, I, I had a sponsee, I was just talking about it this morning. He overdosed and he died um, two yeah. years ago. And I was at open listings when I got the call from his girlfriend at the time. And so that's a real emergency to me. Um, I don't- yeah, It puts things in perspective a bit. It puts things in perspective. And, and I know that could happen to me. That could happen to my partner. And so we're, we're coming at work thinking these aren't hard problems. You know, we've been to hell and back. We've seen hard problems. We're grateful for the, uh, the problems we have on the work front. Um, and so I think we come to this with a different perspective. And when anyone on our team has some sort of hardship like that, I mean, we cover for them times a thousand. And actually, when I was at Google, my first week, my best friend had cancer and he, ulti he ultimately ended up passing away as well. Mm -hmm. My for boss sure. at Google came to me and he said, take a month off. We don't care. And I said, but I'm just starting here. You need me to be, you know, selling Google ads. He said, no, we don't go back to Florida, spend time with him. We're going to pay you the entire time. Come back when you're ready. And I thought, wow, you know, I'll, I'll work here forever. I'll do anything for that manager, you know? And so that's how I treated here too. One of our recent employees, he had he's, his mother struggling with her health. You know, my partner and I said, be as gone as long as you want. And that's just how we do it. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that, Kevin. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know how to follow that, but I want to follow with Marine College and Bars. Sure. <laughs> but um, what's the site? What's the website? Bloomybeauty.com. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I see it right here. And it's two so, amazing women based in yeah. Marina Del Rey. They're former models. Um, they realized that their skin you know, they needed, they need something to brighten their skin and they they're having trouble with, you know, keeping their skin clear. And, um, they started the same way that the RX bar, um, team did and building formulations in their kitchen and, and they brought their product to life. It looks delicious. The almond everywhere. butter chocolate chip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for me, you know, it was two, the, you know, these two women, um, Chrissy and Jayla, they, they were my first, actually my first actual, you know, consulting client that helped me on my path to grow. And so, and now they're a grow client and we've hired, um, you know, one of their content writers that worked with Kalumi and now she works at grow. It's been a, just an amazing experience and they are, um, really persistent entrepreneurs and, and they're, um, I, you know, I hope they really can take over the collagen space. I love it. Yeah, I mean, collagen is really healthy and a lot of collagen, especially if people don't want to, you know, eat something that comes from like a meat product, because a lot of the collagen comes from cows. Uh, I had never heard of marine collagen, actually. So it's pretty yeah, cool. It's a unique type of collagen, as I understand it. Um, and we've been ultra successful with them. You know, they probably get a thousand clicks a day from organic search across, you know, 50 blog posts that we've written over the past year. Yeah. And, um, 
and they outrank vital proteins for many, many, many queries, which is why I love SEO. The little guy yeah. can always compete if you are more thorough and more detailed in yeah. your in your answers. Yeah. I can watch them mixing this cho- whatever chocolate chip cookie dough thing all day long. And, exactly. Uh, I want to eat it. What, what's an example of uh, a popular article? Um, let for me them. see if I can, I can take a look here. I'll just, yeah. I'm just looking as you look for that. Um, I just always love, you know, this, at least in the almond butter chocolate chip one, I love how the first ingredients like almond butter, you know, and it, it exactly. seems like it's all these ingredients are pretty healthy as far as, almond protein um, goes and almond butter and MCT oil. So I'm, I'm down. They have a new customer and they're in Austin, Texas. Um, you so know, that's I think maybe they, where it's manufactured. I, they're in, yeah, they're in Marina del Rey. I got um, it. Okay. But they've kind of been fully remote now since everything right. has gone on with, with COVID. Um, but yeah, I'm still pulling this up here. Let's take a look at um, some of their best. Yeah, I'd love to hear about some exit because I want to talk about them. I'd love to talk about pumpkin care a little bit yeah. too. Um, yeah. But so here's- you had me with bar. So we'll, we'll yeah. go with this for a second. If you Google marine collagen versus bovine, bo- bovine, that's another type of collagen. Yeah. B O V I N E. They rank number one for that. And the title tag is Is marine collagen better than bovine collagen? And typically, if you're really into collagen, you're going to you know, you're going to try to see which type, you know, has the benefits that you're looking for. Vital proteins ranks number 10 for the same query. So that just kind of shows you again, you know, if you write your articles very thoroughly, you know, you can outrank other people. They rank number one for collagen for acne. Um, Hmm. They rank um, number five for how long does it take for collagen supplements to work, um, which is a longer tail query that people, you know, want to know. People want to know, can you take too much collagen? They rank number four for that. Um, and so that in essence shows you, or actually they're number three for that. So, and they're behind Healthline, which is, you know, tough to beat. So that kind of shows you how we think about our blog writing and our content marketing is we're answering questions that consumers have related to yeah. collagen. And then we're positioning Kalumi and we're saying, hey, you know, you, you're looking to reduce the acne on your face. Try marine collagen. It has like a specific, you know, ingredients that help with that. Sign me up. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. looking at the article here, um, collagen versus fish oil. How do collagen and fish oil work together and what are their yes. benefits, which is kind yes. of a cool, because we know the, you know, my background is in biochemistry and as a chiropractor. So I geek out on this stuff and there's a lot of research on, on these things. So like how, you know, positive research on them. So that's really cool. Talk about pumpkin care. Yeah. So pumpkin care, they are a pet insurance company, one of the leader leaders in the space. Um, And they've got amazing plans that they offer um, to to new and existing pet owners. And basically we did something very similar with them. They started with us. They were getting about 10 or 15,000 unique visitors a month. And now they're getting close to 400,000. And the whole organization has really rallied around SEO um, because they have started to drive a lot of policies directly from organic search. And what we've done is we've answered all the different questions that people have about um, preventative care for their, for their pet. And, um, and they are top of mind when people are Googling literally anything about cats or dogs or any type of pet. Um, and so we are hitting them early in their consideration phase, even before they have the, the pet. So um, you know, we will write articles about, um, you know, the, the best, um, you know, uh, hyperallergenic dogs, which is like a really topical thing right now. And that's we'll what we that. searched for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, people don't, that's what, that's what my girlfriend and I search for too. So, um, we do really extensive keyword research to see what prospective and current pet owners are Googling on. So you can hit them in, in different parts of their cycle or their buying yeah. cycle. Exactly. And we, we, we really go deep. So for example, we rank number one for cat years to human years. There's 52,000 people a month that search for that. What Uh, is it again? Cat cat years to human years. Okay. And we rank number one for non-shedding dogs. Um, We rank number one for can dogs eat watermelon. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, there is a- What can dogs eat, Kevin? You know, you, do you feed that. your dog people food or what kind of dog do you have? 
No, I, I have a, I have a mini golden doodle. Okay. Mini golden doodle. Yeah. So no and, uh, people food. You know, very limited unless okay. I, you know, I, I'm a first time dog owner. I didn't grow up with a okay. dog. My girlfriend did. She grew up with a golden retriever and I, I'm scared to, to give my dog anything that he's actually sitting right here taking a nap. I, I'm scared to give him anything that might make him sick. I don't want to be responsible for that. I love him too much. So I try to keep him on a strict. I'm just diet. curious from your research, because you guys probably do a lot of research on this. Oh, of so course. so what does it say about watermelon? Um, well, yeah, we have to just point people to read the article. But Yeah, yeah. We, we, have, to, <laughs> we, we have to point people to read the article because that will be uh, that will be better. Yeah. So. Yes, you can, but you want to lose this. You don't want to have them eat the seeds. Hmm. So that's the, that's the little nuance. Hmm. Now, the other thing that's important is the, every article that we write, whether it's in the collagen space or in you know, the pet space, it's authored by an expert in that subject matter. And that's one really key component that we, you can't miss if you're trying to be good at SEO and content writing. Um, Google is looking for that trustworthiness factor. And so you talk about being a chiropractor and I've, I've gone through a lot of stuff with my lower back. I had a herniated disc. At You're one too point. young for that stuff. I know it was a lot of basketball Sports related okay. at a young age. Yeah. And yeah. so I would only trust you, you know, I wouldn't trust my sister who's a, you know, a tech recruiter to tell me how to fix my back. I would trust someone with your background because you went to school for it. And so the same methodology applies. We make sure that every single article is authored by and reviewed by someone who has credentials in that subject matter. And that goes a long, long way for both the reader and for Google. I'm curious, Kevin, you know, when we're working with, you work with clients, you also have to set expectations, right? It's like, it's not going to, especially with SEO stuff, yeah. like it's not going to happen overnight. It's a lot of work. You can't just start doing it. And like a week later, you start ranking for things. It's like a long-term strategy yeah. for people that they have to commit to. And so for pumpkin care, what were the expectations that you set up front? Obviously you hit it out of the park for them, but what yeah. did you tell them up front of what you should expect um, in month one, two, six, 12? Yeah. So typically what I say is you won't see any results for at least five to six months. Um, and I always try to set that expectation because it's just the truth. Um, what you typically see in months two, three, four, after you've posted blogs and new pages on the site is an increase in impressions. And that means you started to rank number 30 or number 20 for a query, but you don't rank on page one and you don't rank in the top three. So you're not getting any clicks. You're not going to physically feel that as a business. Um, and I try to be overly transparent about that so much so that when I was starting grow, I launched my own blog called the word counter. And it's a grammar blog. So I explain English grammar concepts, like the difference between there versus there and the different ways to spell it. And um, I show my own data on our pitches. And I say, look, this is how long it took me to build my own website. And here's the results now. So that they understand that this is not a sales tactic. It's, ju it's just the truth of how long it takes to build up a new website. And um, I always try to almost speak to the point where I turn them away. Um, and then I know that if they still come back and they really want to work with us, that they really get it. Um, they understand it's a long-term investment and they know that, um, you know, because I have my own site, I, you know, I, I don't recommend any tactics that I don't employ on my own website and I can prove it. And I think that's why people trust us to do work for them because they see that I put my own money into this. What about, talk about ritual and what you did with them. Yeah. So Ritual, it was my second consulting client ever. I'm still very close with one of their co-founders. Her name is Lauren Kleinman. Um, and they really put me and, and grow on the map because they were one of the first direct-to-consumer e-commerce companies that raised considerable, considerable amount of money. Um, and their branding is incredible. Um, it, the imagery, the website, uh, everything they've done um, is really like top tier. Um, and I think they're well respected in their in their niche. And so once the word got out that we were doing um, you know SEO for Ritual and it was working really well, it really things started to warm referrals started to come in like crazy. Um, and we started to get them to rank in the top three for prenatal vitamins and women's multivitamin and how long does it take for prenatal vitamins to work um, and things of that nature. And um, you know if you if you do right by that team, they're really willing to publicly sing your praises. So they've given us testimonials and they've talked about it 
um, in the in marketing communities with other growth marketers, and they will take any reference call that you know that I um, I might have for for a potential client, and they've been real champions of the work that we've done together. Um, so, how did you end up meeting meeting them? You know, I was doing free work for a friend of mine, um, like general growth marketing consulting, and um, you know, just friend of mine wanted to help. And he called me after we worked together for a month or two. And he said, Hey, I know a woman named Lauren. She's looking for SEO. Um, she works at a company called ritual, which I had never heard of. Um, would you be interested in working with them? They'll pay you. And I said, of course. And so <laughs> that's been, um, working for free like that. You know, I started the call with talking about, you know, doing stuff with no expectation of something in return. That's where all the gold is in my career experience. Um, you know, I did, a, I did my friend a solid. I didn't ask him for a dollar. And then he came and repaid me by doing that, which then led me to all these other things. And that's Do any the, um, articles yeah. stick out, Kevin, from Ritual that are popular? Um, let me take a look. I'm looking um, at the website and it's kind of cool. Obviously, the future of health is clear and you can see the clear pills. So they have some amazing imagery and branding on there. For sure. Right. Um, they rank number three for water sol soluble vitamins. That's something that's important to people. Um, they, people. they rank number one for prenatal vitamins versus a regular multivitamin. People want to know what's the difference, um, you know, between that. They rank number one for how long to take prenatal vitamins. Um, they rank number two for can prenatal vitamins make you sick. So, Really, it's a lot of, again, questions related, related to their main products. Um, yeah. And that's really what's driving, um, you know, people search that before they even know that ritual exists. And then ritual has the answer. And it's like, oh, by the way, we sell prenatal vitamins. Would you like to buy it from us? <laughs> I love it. That's the art of um, content marketing. I love it, Kevin. So, um... I have one last question before I ask it. Let's point people to check out more, learn more. They can go to grow.com. That's G R zero.com and, and learn more. Um, so, last question is well, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I lied. I have two la quick last questions. So one okay. last question is I'd love to hear software, software or tools that you love. You know, people out there always geek out on different software and tools you probably internally or externally use a bunch. I'm curious what you recommend people look at. And maybe it's an app on your phone productivity wise, but I'd love yeah. to hear a few of those. In the SEO world, by far, in a way, my number one tool is Ahrefs. That's the tool that I've been using on this call to help determine where different blog posts rank. I can look at any website on the internet and get a general directionally correct view of how much site traffic they get and where it comes from. Um, and then let me see, um, you know, my friend, Abe Burns has an email newsletter. He's a VC at, um, Ashton Kutcher's old, old fund in Los Angeles, and it's called headlines. And he it does a brief synopsis of all the news that transpired in that given day for those people like myself that can't read, um, <laughs> super well. <laughs> uh, and so I love that. That's not really a tech product, but those two I think are great. Um, you know, things that I use on a daily basis to keep up to date on, on things and do research. Very cool. Um, the domain, yes. um, was that the domain you started with or did you have a domain and then you found it and got it? Tell, no, is there so a story behind getting the domain grow? It was, first of all, I really appreciate the respect level that you have for that because that's real marketers and entrepreneurs know how hard it is to get domains like that. Um, but, uh, you know, this one was relatively easy on the scale of, you know, one to 10. It was probably a three. We were able to negotiate with the buyer. I think we bought it for less than $5,000. And my wow. partner and I, we wanted something where I love brands where you hear the name and you understand generally what they do. So, for example, with Lyft, you probably can conceptualize that they take you places. Um, you know, can you give me a Lyft? Um, and with this, you know, we want to grow people's brands. We want to grow their traffic. We want to grow their revenue by any means necessary. And, and we thought that the, you know, GRO, GROW was, was not uh, available. <laughs> that was like a million bucks. 
<laughs> GRO uh, was not available. Every other manipulation we tried was not available, but the zero was, you know, available to be negotiated. And so we just went with it and we saw, we thought, hey, three letter domain were super cool. We both loved that, uh, rare to see. And it generally um, jives with, what, with our overall, our overarching mission statement. Um, you know, we're in growth. Uh, we want to grow, grow companies. And, I love it. Stuck. Kevin, thank you. Everyone check out growgr0.com, learn more. And uh, just, I want to be the first one to thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, you very Kevin. much. It was a pleasure to be on this here with you. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.